Right now, the whole world is watching Tesla's robo-taxi launch in Austin, but they're missing something huge. Something Tesla quietly did just days ago, halfway around the world. Something so hard, it makes Austin look like a robo-taxi playground for children. Something even more impressive than world's first autonomous delivery, from the factory directly to the customer. At least in my opinion. Exactly one year ago, I started Robot IRL to push autonomy to its limits in Europe. And today, Tesla's AI faces its toughest test yet. Navigating Europe's ancient capital of chaos, Rome. After successfully riding through Amsterdam and Paris, Tesla has posted yet another time lapse, this time from Rome, the capital of Italy. I used AI to make it four times slower, much closer to a real time experience. Removing the blur is practically impossible, so sorry for that in advance. But other than that, I tried to enhance the video using the best available tools, so instead of Tesla's sped up commercial, we can dive deep into the AI's decision making and performance. The FSD supervised robo-taxi ride starts as usual. After pressing the blue button, we are immediately pulled into a chaotic storm of cars, bikes and pedestrians, all inside a tight, unmarked historical street. Our car naturally finds its spot and follows the flow of traffic. It is, however, a little slow in recognizing that this tiny alleyway fits two whole lanes and stays in the middle for a few seconds longer than necessary, before being pushed to the left. Notice the tall, closely packed buildings, which can absolutely destroy GPS and of course internet reception. Unlike Waymo, however, Tesla does not require constant signal in order to drive. It follows navigation, sure, but the driving is mostly informed by what the car sees and judges with its own built-in hardware in the moment. Is it really lane splitting if there are no clear lanes? I just call this natural chaos. We have a green light and even a green arrow, but cars keep pouring from the right like it's Grand Theft Auto Rome Edition. We take a left and patiently continue sitting in traffic. Notice how much stuff is happening all around on the car screen. And that's not even everything the car really sees. In fact, these visualizations are almost completely disconnected from reality. And the newest versions of FSD take into account, well, everything. Two imaginary lanes become one, and the street gets even tighter here. But the Tesla still drives like a local. Even in complicated situations, it strikes just the right balance of assertiveness and politeness. Look at how it makes enough room for the white car pulling in front of us. Then we squeeze in between some construction vehicles and a huge bus on the left, but this is far from the tightest situation in this video, so definitely keep watching to see that one. The traffic around is absolutely crazy. Human taxi drivers overtaking into oncoming traffic as we're approaching the famous Theater of Marcellus, a famous tourist hotspot that's even older and sometimes more crowded than the Colosseum. The key to driving in chaotic city streets like these without many clear rules is to stay smooth and predictable and that's exactly what our AI driver is doing here. Busting through a crazy intersection full of cars going all kinds of directions at the same time. And notice the absence of lane markings during the whole ride. Before long, we're stuck in traffic again, near one of the most challenging places even in Rome. There's a multi-road merging zone with almost no marked lanes surrounded by tourists jaywalking randomly, taxis frequently cutting ahead using the curb and traffic lights, yield signs and roundabout logic just blending together. A lot to take in, even for a human driver, but for vision only autonomy? This is as hardcore as it gets. Massive visual noise all over the place, ancient stones, harsh midday shadows from trees, pedestrians, fountains, flags, scooters, park tour buses, all while GPS is degraded due to signal bounds off the thick Roman stone walls. 
we jump out of the chaos just for a little bit, onto a more modern, wide promenade where the only remaining menace are the relentless hurrying swarms of local drivers. But after we stop at this nightmare of an intersection, we get flanked by not one, not two, but three lane splitting scooters. When the light green finally hits, the Tesla politely lets them go first and slowly accelerates into an effortless left turn. In my last video from Paris, some of you expressed concerns about traffic light visibility in situations like this upcoming intersection. We are basically under the lights right now and it's by no means clear if the Tesla can even see them because it pulled so far forward. It definitely can't see anything with its front cameras and I seriously doubt the side cameras are positioned in the right angle here so what do you think? Can the AI handle this lack of information? Despite all of that it kind of picks the right moment to proceed forward, maybe just a little bit too late, after a super long wait and just goes for it. FSD is super cautious about this Volkswagen nosing into our lane, overtaking him only after he realizes and corrects his faulty human driving behavior. And here you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a fully autonomous robot casually driving around the Colosseum. If this doesn't deserve your thumbs up, then I really don't know what does. We're letting artificial intelligence navigate the cradle of Western civilization. Another intersection, this time the lights are nicely visible even for your human eyes on the video, showcasing the European way of doing things. There's a soon extinct species of a Toyota human driver taxi dead ahead. And even though we're following him to the next intersection, let's not replicate the speeding and the harsh acceleration and deceleration, shall we? Robotaxi is all about the smoothest ride you can get, which of course greatly improves safety as well. I predict that one of the biggest forcing functions for robotaxi adoption will be the rising price of car insurance for human drivers specifically. Once insurance companies see the data proving self-driving cars are way safer, that's another cost advantage added to smart electric vehicles. We let a few pedestrians cross while barely slowing down for them, perfectly finding just the right balance of safety and smoothness. FSD doesn't slow down at all for this gentleman approaching the sidewalk. Autopilot would slam on the brakes here for sure. Overtaking parked cars through tight gaps is flawless as well. And let me remind you this is one of the main reasons Tesla skeptics mention when they argue that FSD is never going to work in Europe. So here you have it. Working not just somewhere in Europe now, but in some of the most challenging cities and overall driving conditions you can find here. We've seen this software work flawlessly, not just in the US, but in Canada, Mexico and China. As for Europe, there are tests like this one from Amsterdam, Paris and Berlin. Turning left exactly as the signs order us and straight into another challenging condition. This time from a lighting perspective. Immediately the robotaxi executes an impressive tight merge, avoiding a car blocking its lane ahead. Why impressive you ask? There was a car right behind us that the Tesla had to negotiate with and that's far from the only challenge in this part of the city. Driving under trees with flickering leaves, scattering the harsh noon sunlight all around and casting weird sharp shadows. If something can trip up the pure vision system, this could be it. Despite all of this, tons of pedestrians and other traffic, the visuals and the driving stay stable and consistent and the car's performance doesn't deteriorate whatsoever. Negotiating with a bus driver intruding into our lane and shooting the tightest gap a Tesla can fit into? No problem. Please try to argue why self-driving cars need LiDAR again in the comments after watching this. The real issue isn't perception anymore. It's intelligence and Tesla is scaling that up with every new release of full self-driving. I have to confess that after experiencing FSD firsthand in San Francisco, I'm not even surprised by how well it's driving here and how smooth the robotaxi rollout is going so far in Austin. How many active robotaxis do you think they will have by the end of this year or the next year? Will they pull out the safety monitors? And importantly, will they have a bigger area of operation than Waymo, their biggest autonomous competitor? Let me know in the comments.
We're entering a junction where the road layout feeds in from several directions with unequal priority and like most historical parts in Rome, traffic flows more based on momentum rather than signals. In cities like this, the map is just a suggestion. What matters is motion prediction and the ability to respond to unstructured traffic patterns without hesitation. It's not about following the rules. It's about understanding what everyone else expects you to do. And the only way to get anywhere is to maintain assertiveness without becoming aggressive. Because hesitation at any point would solve the entire intersection. It's crazy that robots are now sharing the road with humans. I used to think we'd need them to talk to each other and remove humans first. But here we are. What a time to be alive. I can't believe Robot IRL just turned one year old and I'm finally launching channel memberships. If you want to support high quality European autonomy videos, this is the best way to do it. Every member gets a custom robot badge that evolves over time, just like a Tesla with over-the-air updates, plus early access to all new videos and a set of exclusive emojis you can drop in the comments to flex on the normies. Hit the join button below to become a robot insider right now or drop a quick tip using the thanks button. Either way, it directly funds more chaos, more cities and more brutally honest autonomy testing. Thanks for being a part of this. Now, let's get back to Rome. Look at all those pedestrians. In US suburbs or car-centric areas like Texas, Florida or Los Angeles, they often feel like intruders on roads built for cars. They hesitate, always look both sides before crossing the street and jaywalking is a no-go. In Europe, on the other hand, pedestrians generally feel confident asserting space on crosswalks without explicit traffic lights. There's a shared social contract around this, and in countries like Germany, Scandinavia or the Netherlands, this is borderline sacred. Failing to yield is both illegal and socially outrageous. People often cross mid-block or wherever convenient, and cars are expected to adapt. Another huge challenge for any autonomous vehicle. This ride is over with zero intervention, so go ahead and order another robo-taxi on the house. This time it's your choice, Paris or Amsterdam. Choose wisely, because both cities are beyond hardcore, and in some ways the car's performance is even more impressive than here in Rome.